The following podcast is recorded and produced by Emerge, a media creators co-op, in affiliation with the network at BICBB-radio.com. Welcome to the Support Local Everything podcast, a podcast of the Upward Niagara Chamber of Commerce. I'm President Jennifer Pauly, and we're here today with a special guest. Well, Teresa is the manager and community affairs of Niagara Power Vista, and I, I appreciate you coming in today. I was just telling Teresa that the Power Authority and the Niagara Visitor Center there is one of my husband's favorite places when he would have the summers to watch the kids he used to take them pretty much every day they had their little lanyard with the little card and he said all right kids we're going somewhere educational and they loved it their favorite thing was the house the big house that's in there favorite yes. thing so tell us a little bit about the niagara power vista visitor center first and and what we can expect when you go in there when it's open A lot of community members may have never stepped foot in there. They see it every day, but they might not have realized where they can go or how it's open or what they can see in there. Tell us a little bit about that, and then we'll delve into some of the upcoming events that you have. Sure, no problem. So uh, the Niagara Power Vista is obviously located on top of the Niagara Power Project plant, the Robert Moses plant. Uh, We're perched right above. We have an observation deck that's about 350 feet above the Niagara River Gorge. Uh, So that's one of our uh, claim to fame also. Um, We have uh, renovated in 2016, so we are now a state-of-the-art visitor center with a a number of interactive exhibits um, that are activated by an RFID uh, chipped card. So you can experience uh, all of our exhibits and take your experience home with you. Um, We uh, worked a great deal uh, when renovating with uh, school STEM uh, uh, experts so that we could craft uh, an exhibit experience that not only was fun and attraction-like, but also met a lot of the curriculum standards that many of our local school districts are are achieving right now. So uh, we have three different age levels, um, the middle, the elementary, the middle to high school, and the adult level. So teachers can plan their visits to uh, hit certain milestones, and that's always been great. We're open 360 days per year, uh, with the only exception of Thanksgiving, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, and New Year's Day. Uh, we're, our hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, we welcome school field trips all year long. Um, and we have seen an uptick in the fall field trips, which is really nice because come uh, uh, May and June, we are flooded uh, with field trips. So we like to explain to, to teachers that visit us all year so you don't get try to get crammed into that, that small space. Um, we obviously enjoy a, a number of inter- international tourists during the, the tourist season. We're one of the stops on the Discover Niagara shuttle. Uh, which has been nice, and um, we have uh, welcomed a lot of community organizations that come and meet with us, do a tour, and then have their meeting. So we're kind of a, a, we serve all kinds of a target audience. You sure do. I think one of the great things about that visitor center is it's free. Most important. That's the yes, most important are. thing. It's yes. free. You don't, you you walk in and right off the bat, you're you see such an amazing experience and you're able to be given all of this information that is just it, it's just such a wealth of information for this area. Talk us through the the process of coming into the visitor center because I think some people, if you've never been. You may not be aware of what, you know, where that building is or how you get over to the other part of the building. Sure. Talk, talk us through that. Well, we are located, uh, if you go down, if you see Niagara University and then there's that little road that you go down into Niagara University, we, we are to the left. So it's Power Vista Drive, obviously. And then you go to the left and you park, uh, free parking, obviously. We have ample parking. Uh, you come inside, you're greeted by one of our tour guides. You're provided with an overview of your experience and handed a power player badge, which is the RFID chipped 
um, experience badge. Um, we have registration kiosks right there. So you register your badge to yourself. Uh, you include your email address, which we don't keep, but it allows the experience to send you a link to all your saved photo and game challenges throughout the facility. Um, there's a few uh, exhibits in the reception area. Then you're going to go upstairs. You're going to see a few more exhibits along the, what we call the glass walkway, which gives you a beautiful view uh, and right down a, a look right down into our, our uh, Robert Moses plant. And then once you're across the walkway, you step down into the upper level, and then there's escalators down into the lower level. There's also an elevator for, for those who might need it. We suggest that you start with the feature film on the lower level first because it's a 13 and a half minute film, but it gives you a great overview of what we do here at NIPA, what we do at the Niagara Power Project, the future of energy. So it gives you a good idea of what you're going to be experiencing. The majority of our exhibits at the Power Vista simulate what we do at the plant. So you'll get an idea. We don't do plant visits anymore due to security reasons, but you will get an idea of what our workers are doing at the plant to generate electricity. I've been to the Power Vista Visitor Center many times, and every time I walk in, I'm just overwhelmed with all of the information. There's so much. I could spend a day in there. Unfortunately, usually I have to go right back to work. But the information seems to be always changing and always evolving in there. There's something different every time I go in there to, to learn. And it's such a, an amazing visitor center that we have just up the hill from the village of Lewiston and adjacent to Niagara University. It's very easily accessible. It, visitors can find it. Community residents can find it. It's a gem that we have here in our community. Yeah, and that word of mouth really travels uh, along the community. And and into Buffalo and into the Southern Tier. I mean, we get a lot of visitors from around the community. And we also are a great place for um, science birthday parties, if you will. Uh, so the weekends, we, we have typically two to three to four uh, birthday parties each weekend, uh, each day of the weekend. And it's been a really great opportunity for members of the community who otherwise might not be able to um, go somewhere else to have something local within their backyard where they can come and explore and who doesn't like all of that you can learn as little as you want and have as much fun as you want or you can learn as much as you want and still have as much fun as you want what's your favorite exhibit obviously my favorite exhibit is the simulated ride um, and some days I take that just to keep yourself in a good mood uh, it's just so much fun and I love being in my office and hearing uh, school groups in that screaming with excitement so it's it it really does uh, solidify how much fun it is what what do students get out of that experience obviously they're coming for an educational aspect their school is booking at the teacher is booking at what is something that you hear back from the classrooms or the students on their experience there what do they take away from learning well the the what I hear the most is that it's more attraction based. So you, you don't even realize how much you're learning when you're there. You're just having a good time. And, and the challenges and the touch screens and the computer games, you know, it's all fun stuff, but you are learning. And I think that's what the teachers tell me is they don't realize how much they're learning and they always want to come back. So we're, we're grateful to have them. Definitely. Definitely. My, my, uh, chamber organization and I know other organizations have been able to do the tour of the building and then have a meeting downstairs and really give other local community residents maybe the opportunity to see what is there. Sometimes it's, it amazes me how many local communities know that the, the visitor center is there, but they've never stepped in. So we appreciate the opportunity to be able to host programs and meetings there to really just let people know, listen, this is here. It's an, it's a, an amazing place. And I know a lot of the organizations are grateful to have that space there and to be able to utilize it. Absolutely. It's not called a community room for nothing. That's right. Um, and also I want to point out to schools, I know funding for transportation is a, is a real challenge uh, today, and the New York State Parks Program has a couple of different programs, either the ladders or the 
Connect Kids programs. Um, so they should research and look into that. We, d we get a number of those visits, and it just means they, they, they might have a two-prong visit, one at the parks, and then they can go to another location that's part of that program. Um, and get their transportation covered. So I just wanted to do a little plug yes, out for that. that. And a lot of people may not know that, yeah. so that's very important to pass on that information. You had mentioned it's not a community room or a community center without having the community, and that is 100% true, and you do a lot of opportunity. You have a lot of opportunities in programming to invite the community to come in. One that's just happening at the end of the week with an extra egg EGG extravaganza. Tell us about the program that programming that you have throughout the year. Mm -hmm. Start with the one that's coming up, and then some of the highlights through the year that that are signature events uh, that happen. Sure. So our spring extravaganza. That's one of our annual events, community events. It's obviously free and open to the public. It takes place on Saturday, March twenty third, from ten a.m. to three p.m. We provide free photos with the bunny from 10 to 2 and we do know that people come and line up early because that line can get quite long um, so and we along with that we do some crafts we do face painting we have a, a, some balloon art we have a trackless train that that circles around our power vista circle um, so we have a lot of fun on that day and that that event itself draws anywhere from a thousand to to 2,500 people, depending upon, you know, whatever else is going on in the community. So it's very popular, and we're happy to provide that to you. Um, we also uh, plan a few others throughout the year. Uh, June 8th is our Touch a Truck event. That is a, a growing event that we've had, and we like to include the community. And, you know, obviously this is an opportunity for us to showcase our own workers and the equipment that they use to get the job done at the, at the project. Uh, plus, we also extend it out to, you know, the, the NFTA and the um, New York State Department of Transportation. Um, this, this, we have a number of other exhibitors that come in for that. Um, the Air Base brings a, really some cool stuff out. Uh, some if there's a truck, it's there. It's there's a <laughs> truck, it's there. And that, like I said, it, it does grow uh, every year. And uh, we were happy to have over 1,200 people at the event last year. So this year, that's on June 8th. Um, the Wildlife Festival has typically been a two-day event. This year, we're gonna we're gonna ramp it down to one day. So that's gonna be on uh, 9/28, uh, September 28th, and that coincides with National Hunting and Fishing Day. Um, more details to come on that, obviously. And then uh, in the fall, we do the spectacular event on October 26th. That's another 10 to 3, uh, 10 a.m. to 3 uh, p.m. In November, we plan an, uh, an event that uh, coincides with Native American Heritage Awareness Month. Um, we'll stay tuned to our website for details on that. And then uh, round out it with uh, December 14th with Deck the Halls. Um, December is another great month to showcase all of the uh, service organizations in the community through our Festival of Trees. Uh, any any not-for-profit agency that wants to book a tree or reserve a tree can do so. Uh, they just provide the decorations, we provide the tree and the LED lighting. So uh, it's a great way to um, inform the community about many of the not-for-profit organizations in, in our area. It definitely is. I know we've decorated trees for Small Business Saturday, highlighting that event, and it's been fun going in to decorate and seeing other nonprofits in there decorating their tree as well. Some have handmade ornaments, some have branded trees mm -hmm. with their logos all over it. Uh, some bring some of their uh, volunteers or some of the organizations, some of the members who come in and decorate. It's always a fun time of the it year is. to do that. And then you see all the trees as you're driving on the Niagara Scenic Parkway. You see all the trees decorated and lit up through the hallway. It's, it's yeah, we, such a we nice touch. We get a touch. lot of visitors. They, they enjoy that. Um, and then I want to add that this year, obviously, everybody's uh, preparing for the total solar eclipse. Uh, we're no different than any other. We are going to have some uh, events leading up to the eclipse as part of the New York State Parks and NASA uh, collaboration um, from April 4th to the, to the 7th. We will have a variety of NASA specialists coming in and doing programs between at 11 and again at 2. And on the 6th and 7th, we will have uh, youth activities um, between that at noon. Uh, going forward. We have a whole uh, lot of information on that on our website. Uh, it will be uploaded uh, shortly. 
but we will, uh, you can obviously call us and get additional information, but we're excited about that. Yes, what a great opportunity for people of all ages to learn a little bit more, celebrate the eclipse ahead of time, get a little bit more deeper understanding, and to partner with NASA on that is such a great opportunity right. to get information out. Wow. So I'm excited about that program. I, I think that anything educational, especially around that eclipse, is just going to give a deeper meaning to watching the eclipse as it happens and, and letting, you know, children and people know exactly, you know, what's going on. Sometimes people are like, what, what, what's actually happening with this No eclipse? one knows what to expect. Exactly. So it's just really kind of exciting in that respect. Um, we are, NASA has provided us with some uh, eclipse glasses, and we will be giving those away for free uh, starting on the 18th. Um, we have a few safety videos that we want folks to watch before they get their glasses. So every day, starting at 3 to 4.30, we'll be showing uh, a little safety instructional uh, video on how to wear properly wear the glasses. It's very important that people understand the process in which to wear, take off, or wear the glasses during a total eclipse because it can have some safety damages. So we're going to do our part and make sure people are informed about that. We'll show the film free in our classroom. And then uh, you can walk away with a pair of uh, Eclipse glasses. Excellent. Can't wait for that to happen. What is the best way for people to find information? There's a website online, mm -hmm. but how do you get to the Niagara Power Vista information? You can go uh, online at www.nipa.gov. Uh, if you backslash Niagara Power Vista, you should be able to get to our website. If you aren't able to do that, you just look under the visitors portion of the, of the top tabs and you'll find us that way. You certainly can call us at 716-286-6661 uh, and we'll be happy to reserve, make your reservation, give you information about our upcoming events uh, and anything else you might need. Excellent. One of my... Uh, favorite things to do is actually there's other visitor centers throughout New York Power Authority and maybe people may not know that, that but I've been correct. to a few. What makes the Niagara Power Vista Center different than the rest? Well obviously we're the, the largest of our four visitor centers but I think just uh, in in the sense that we've been here for so long and we're just a part in the, of the fabric of the community and our goal is to make sure that people understand the benefit of renewable energy and, and how we go about to produce that and what our part is in, in, in doing that. Um, obviously, I'm biased. I work here, and uh, I've been here for quite a long time. And, um, but all of, our, all of our visitor centers are regionalized, too. So it, and no matter which one you go to is a different experience, and it's focused on what they do, where they're at, and then there's some, you know, companion programming. We have some universal programming across the sites, our STEM activities, our STEM kits. Um, but we want to be able to, to inform the community about uh, our individuality within, within the community itself. Well, we hope everybody, if you haven't been, make this your number one thing to do over the next couple weeks, especially before the summer season when things just start getting underway yeah, and we it becomes busy. It. You, you, sh Come you on certainly in. can. But the if you've never been, make it your stop for the Eclipse information. It's just such a great uh, program that you're offering for the community and visitors alike. Thank you. Thank you so much, Teresa, for, for stopping by. And one of the things that, um, you know, we focus on is community and supporting Supporting Local Everything. That's the name of our podcast. And we're so happy to have you as a partner in our organization to make things happen, to make community happen, and to, you know, make this area just better than it was yesterday. So we appreciate everything that you do. We are grateful to be here and, and to be part of that. Thank you. Thank you. Join us next week on the Support Local Everything. Make sure you stop by NIPA's website to find out more information throughout the year, especially the programming that is coming up. We hope that you bring the kids out to the extravaganza, EGG extravaganza, and have a great time. Get in that line, meet the, at the Easter Bunny, and find out more about their upcoming events as the year goes on. Thank you, Teresa. Thank and you. And join us next week.